Hey people, welcome to the Run Testers and to our head-to-head -head between two of the best do-it-all daily trainers going. In this video we are pitching the Sockley Endorphin Speed 4 up against the Hoka Max 6. These are two of our favourite new shoes of 2024. Both are built for daily miles with a faster training edge. There's quite a difference in price with the Hoka coming in cheaper, but is it a better shoe? And which one of these will suit your running best? Watch on to find out. First up some quick details then, and the Endorphin Speed 4 stack height stays the same with 36mm in the heel and 28mm in the forefoot for an 8mm drop. The Hoka Max 6 also stays the same as the Mac 5, packing a bigger overall stack than the Speed 4 with 37mm in the heel, 32 in the forefoot in the men's, 35 in the heel, 30 in the forefoot in the women's for a 5mm drop. Weight wise the Speed 4 weighs in 8.6 ounces or 245 grams in our UK 8.5 test shoe size. That's slightly heavier than the Max 6 which comes in 8.1 ounces or 230 grams. On price the Endorphin Speed costs £180 in the UK or £170 in the US. The Max 6 are a good chunk cheaper at £140 and $140. Now let's give you a quick shoe comparison and starting with the midsoles there are some significant changes to the Hoka Max 6. The big news here is that Hoka has swapped the ProFly Plus foam for a single layer of supercritical EVA that Hoka says creates a more responsive ride and unlike the Speed 4 there is no plate here in the midsole. The Speed 4 midsole retains a decent sized stack of Power Run PB Peaback Super Foam along with a re-engineered winged nylon plate to provide some stability, rigidity and forefoot flexibility and you still get Saucony speed roll geometry with a decent rocker shaping here. Both shoes have very similar width forefoot and heel platforms overall. Up top on the Max 6 you've got a new Creole Jacquard mesh with marginally more structure than the Speed 4 and a little less flex across the top of the toes. The Speed 4 uses a zonal mesh that's light airy with a perforated design. Both of these shoes have medium padded heel collars. The Max 6 are slightly narrower the Max 6 tongues are more flat wrapping while the Speed 4s are almost sort of knitted and a bit more flimsy. Both tongues are gusseted. When you flip both shoes over there's a pretty generous covering of outsole rubber on both. The Hoka Max flex grooves are gone and so is the exposed EVA foam outsole that was there. That's been replaced by a heavier duty rubber covering across a substantial portion of the outsole now. That is a thumbs up. On the Speed 4 you've got an updated outsole design as well with one large sort of lattice section here covering the whole forefoot. And you've got these two rear sections in the heel that seem to cover more of the key impact points than you've got in the Speed 3. So when it comes to fit, I ran in my regular running shoe size, UK 8.5 in, in both of these shoes. That would be my normal size in a Hoka. It would be my normal size in a Saucony as well. I think they've both got really good secure hold on the whole foot. I think they're very comfortable. They've both got good step in comfort. The major difference here though is that as Hokers do, the Hoka Max 6 come up much snugger, much tighter. There is not much wiggle room in these shoes. They hold very securely. It's almost like a dialed in race fit. There's a bit more wiggle room into the toe box, a bit more volume in the Saucony and Dolphin Speed 4. I think that kind of maybe makes that sort of cater a little bit better to longer time on feet, longer runs than the Max 6. But if you like that really sort of dialed in sort of tight, snug, hugging fit, then the Hoka Max 6 has got a bit more of that. But overall, I would recommend going true to size in these shoes. Unless you like a bit more room, then you might want to consider looking at a wide in the Max 6, uh, or maybe even going half the size up. But I like them the way they are, you know, nice and snug and good for those kind of faster efforts. So I've got my normal UK size in both of these shoes, which is a UK 9. With Hoka, that's a US 9.5, and with Saucony, it's a US 10. That's the, that's the size I normally have with both of these brands. It's, you know, take into account that Hoka will fit a bit closer as a result of the way they convert that. The Hoka is a narrower shoe, for sure. The Endorphin Speed is wider, but not as wide as the Endorphin Speed 3. Well, it didn't feel it that way to me anyway. With the Endorphin Speed 3, I had a little bit of heel slippage, and it felt a bit too big, but I haven't really had that problem with the Endorphin Speed 4. But it is a wider shoe than the Hoka. As someone with a narrow foot myself, I prefer the slightly more dialed in fit of the Hoka, but the speed has been okay. I would stick to your normal running shoe size with both of these shoes. Just bear in mind that the Hoka is quite a narrow shoe and the speed's more of a wide one. So then in testing, I've covered more than 60 miles in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, and that includes 90 minute efforts at the top end of my easy pace, half marathon pace training runs with some faster strides at the end and plenty of interval work. I've worked this shoe across a range of paces and on mixed terrain road and light off-road. I've logged 60 miles plus in the Max 6 2. That includes an all-out 10K race where I clocked a new PB, along with a good mix of marathon training sessions from fast intervals and fartleks. 
to progression runs. And I've also thrown in some slower, easier miles there. Again, I've done most of the miles on the road, but some on light off-road river paths. Now, I also did a side-by-side -side mile with one shoe on each foot to compare how these two shoes feel. And here's what I found. So I've just done the side-by-side -side mile. I've got the speed four on the left foot. I've got the max six on the right foot. Really interesting to do this one. So I wasn't really sure how these shoes would compare. The major difference here really is just a little bit in the soft tuning of the foam, I think, and the way that the rocker works. I think the Hoka Max 6, basically what you've got here is a much more responsive, much more immediate, firmer, snappier ride that relies a lot more, for me at least in the way I run up on my mid to four foot, on the rocker. The rocker engages earlier. You don't get quite as much kind of drop into the foam and then propulsion out of it. Now, what that means, I think, is the the Socken Endorphin Speed 4 ride. It's a little bit more cushioned. It's a bit more forgiving. I think it has the same energy. I think you get the, bait, the sort of same top speeds out of both these shoes. I think you engage them slightly differently. And the Speed 4 maybe just takes a little bit longer and a little bit more to come back. But there are benefits to that. I think the Speed 4 is definitely going to be a better shoe if you want to use it over longer, longer distances, longer kind of marathon training runs. I would probably choose this guy if I was going to go for sort of longer tempo sessions where I was doing you know big chunks of marathon pace or faster running I'd probably go max six if I was looking for shorter faster maybe punchier stuff that's not to say the speed four can't do the shorter faster but that's just how I would sort of differentiate between these two shoes if I had to choose between them now I really like the ride in both the shoes I think they're both really lively really snappy and they're both excellent daily trainers that can do a really cracking job now the max six obviously doesn't have a plate but I think you're getting the kind of stiffness from the outsole and that kind of rocker almost feel like it's working like a plate as much as in the speed four and I think that definitely makes it a very kind of snappy shoe and one that I think could do as well at the top paces as the speed four if you like things a little bit more cushioned then I think you know you're going to want to go for the speed four these are two of my favorite new daily trainers of 2024 uh, but they approach that role in different ways they're both very versatile shoes I say that up top I think you can do pretty much any kind of run in both of these shoes but they approach the all in different ways like the endorphin speed is a plated shoe a super trainer it's got the nylon plate in there Socanese Piva foam the power run PB foam also seen in the endorphin pro speed roll rocker it's you know got a lot of super shoe elements and it you know has a higher price tag than the Hoka as a result and you certainly get a slightly bouncier more propulsive feel I would say from the Socony when it comes to faster runs I think the runs that really come into play when you have a plated shoe versus a non-plated shoe I think are less so kind of short interval runs but more where you're trying to sustain a speed so whether that's races or hard tempo runs the Dolphin Speed just gives you that little bit more punch it gives you that efficiency benefit you get from plated shoes with these kind of foams in them and the speed roll rock is really good as well moving you through your foot strike and just helping you to hold hard paces over long distances it's a shoe that I've loved doing those kind of runs in from the very first version of it the Endorphin Speed and the Dolphin Speed 4 is still excellent in that role whilst also being a comfortable shoe to use for very easy runs right down to recovery plods I think it is you know the most versatile shoe out there and it does that job really well it's a soft feeling shoe when you want it to be in a comfortable shoe but has enough firmness and pop when you do want to run fast the Hoka Max 6 is a versatile shoe but there's a lot less going on with the midsole like it's a pretty good foam you have here but it's not an outstanding one and you've got a good rocker on the shoe and it's just a lightweight nimble agile shoe and that really contributes to it being you know a fast feeling shoe it's almost like you're working against quite a neutral balanced midsole that just allows you to go and do the kind of run you want to but it's not really aiding you in the same way you have with the endorphin speed for which is giving you that extra punch from the I think better foam and indeed the nylon plate I have enjoyed doing fast runs in this shoe I've done a long progression run in the Hoka a 15 miler finishing it around marathon pace and it does feel good for doing that kind of run in it also is very good for relaxed runs I've always loved doing long runs in the Hoka Mac line I think it's a very good shoe for long runs and that's the same with the Hoka Mac 6 and it is also great for just mooching along at very relaxed paces when you want to so there's not really anything against the Hoka and how it performs on all of those runs I just think you get slightly greater range and certainly speed with the endorphin speed because of the uh, you know, super elements within it especially the plate and the rocker which I do think just help push you on over long distances if you're trying to maintain a fast pace. I did do a short run wearing both shoes at the same time and definitely you can feel the extra softness and bounce and propulsion of the Endorphin Speed 4 even over the kind of short distances it just gives you a little bit more back. Hoka feels like a nice natural shoe that's very easy to get in sync with and line up your running with no matter what speed you're going at it feels very natural on the foot but it's not really so noticeable in giving you that propulsive punch that you do get from the Endorphin Speed and it feels a bit firmer on the foot as well so yeah kind of crystallized all those differences I've talked about in the run test.
So verdict for me is you can pick up either of these and you're going to get a very good daily trainer. You can even pick up both if you want a plated daily trainer and a non-plated daily trainer because they both do a very good job of pretty much any kind of run. Like I said, in the run test, the endorphin speed, I think, has a bit more range and it does feel better for holding fast speeds uh, at over long distances or even longer reps, things like, you know, five minute, six minute reps, that kind of thing. You can get more of a benefit from the endorphin speed. When it comes to shorter intervals, I don't think there's too much in it. And the Hoka is a very comfortable shoe that you can use for fast runs as well. It's a nice lightweight shoe as well a really enjoyable shoe to run in just feels very natural pretty much at any pace but the added tech you get with the endorphin speed 4 i think does come into play it is noticeable on the run and it does just give you that extra punch and pop for faster running so yeah both good shoes i picked the endorphin speed in my rotation when we picked out our videos as the most versatile daily trainer and i would stick by that decision i do think it's the one i would get if i just wanted a nice shoe to do it all but if you want a plate free alternative to the speed it's between the hoka max 6 and the rebel v4 and they are both very good options for that it's a really nice thing to have in your rotation a shoe like this just a lightweight shoe that you can go and do anything in without necessarily feeling you're being aided by a plate like you are with the endorphin speed 4 but for pure performance i'd get the endorphin speed 4 i'd pay the extra to pick it up verdict then well i like both these shoes i put them in my top five best versatile daily trainers right now both packing loads of energy good on foot comfort and easy shoes to do almost any kind of miles in them. If I had to split them, I'd say that the Speed 4 offers a shade more cushion protection along with its speed, while the Max 6 is a little firmer and immediate, relying a lot more on the rocker and a bit more on the rocker than the foam, in fact. And for that reason, I think if you like more kind of soft spring, you're probably going to want to go for the Speed 4. If you're after a more rocker responsive ride, then go for the Max 6. I also think the Speed 4 is a better distance shoe, longer distance shoe, because of that extra softness protection and the overall kind of roomier fit. So if you talk about two to three hours on feet, the Speed 4. For pure value, I'd go for the Hoka Max 6, but for all out performance, versatility, and comfort, I'd go for the Speed 4. If I had to choose one shoe absolutely out of these two shoes, I think I'd personally still pay the extra for the Speed 4. It's just a shoe that I think fits my style very well, and I know I can use it for almost everything, when it comes to the Max 6, I might not want to run longer than kind of two to three hours in this shoe. So there you have it. That's our head-to-head -head between the Hoka Max 6 and the Sockney Endorphin Speed 4. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments. If you've run in either of these two shoes or both of them, let us know what you think of them as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more great run testers videos when they land. If you want full reviews of both these shoes, I'm going to pop them on the channel just about now. Otherwise, as ever, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, happy running, everyone.